because they're the ones that are doing this. They're the ones manipulating the markets like they do. They, you know, they're wicked. They've been saying that they're, they do all these good things, creating these frauds that, we, that buy into us, that everyone buys into. And, you know, it's just unbelievable. People, you have to understand, I'm speaking the truth. They are controlling the show. They are doing it. They are letting us believe one thing and doing another thing and then you say I can't believe it happened that way well we never could have expected that and they say all the same things bail us out again or you know it's time to go to another war this is gonna be endless war everybody it's never gonna stop and you Obama knots out there that you know that are just like you know zombies just to like follow Obama you know please wake up he's a puppet just like Clinton was a puppet just like Bush was a puppet before and they're all puppets they're all doing what the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers are moving towards. They're trying to get their agenda across for the one world government, eventually a one world currency. They created all this, this derivative fraud, and they're going to do it. And they're doing it. And this is what's going to happen. I mean, people look back in history at what I'm saying and what everyone else is saying in the movement here, and they're going to say, my God, how come we didn't listen? Please listen. Do your own research and then come to your own conclusions. It won't take very long. I mean, I guarantee you if you just started scratching the surface with the Federal Reserve really deeply and looking what they do and what they own and then that they own most of the pharmaceutical industry, they own so many of these industries that, have, that are costing, um, that are enslaving America. Look why health insurance costs are so high. Think about it. Come on. Put it all together. It's a very, very, uh, you know, complicated puzzle. But, you know, it's not one of those, like, 50 puzzle pieces. You know, you can go to a store and buy a 50-piece puzzle or a 500-piece. Maybe this is a 5,000-piece, whatever, but it's still a puzzle, and you can put it together. And it just takes a little time, but if you start at the right point, like I said, start with the owners of the Federal Reserve, and then what other interests do they own, and who, who do they have control of, and how, is the, uh, how do these things that I always speak about, I mean, if you research the words that I tell you, these things that I'm saying uh, about the, about the Saxe Coburg Gothas and and the fact that the uh, the Rockefellers funded Hitler and I.G. Farben and, they, and and I mean just on on, on through through the, through the entire uh, World War II before it they they funded the eugenics movement it continues to this day they founded the United Nations they control the council the the foreign policy through the Council on Foreign Relations uh, which is a think tank which is garbage the, the Bilderberg Group. I mean, these are all things that are real, and this is what's happening. And they're moving it into this direction of this one world government, one currency, and everything's going to be fine, just like Ned Beatty said before. Now, if you believe that, when they come and knock on the door, go with them. But I won't. I, I won't take a flu shot. I won't give my son inoculations. I won't. I know what's going on. I won't give him GMO food. I won't give him sodas or anything that has that has corn syrup in it. I know what's going on. No MSG. I know what's going on. No fluoride. Don't drink water from the tap. Try not to get. Try not to swallow it. Okay, so now the U.S. is sending more contractors to secure Libya's weapons stockpile. Oh, goodness, here comes more spending of money and fleecing the American people. This is from the New York Times also. This is actually from today. Uh, the State Department is sending dozens of American contractors to Libya to help that country's fledging efforts to track down and destroy heat-seeking anti-aircraft missiles looted from government stockpiles that could be used against civilian airliners. The contractors, weapons and explosive specialists are part of a growing $30 million American program to secure Libya's conventional weapons arsenal, which was ransacked during the fall of the government of Muammar Gaddafi. Uh, Americans and other uh, Western officials are especially concerned that as weapons slip from the state custody, they can be easily sold through the black markets and to other countries, fueling regional wars or arming terrorist groups. Okay, now you're trying to tell me that the CIA aren't taking these weapons and and just taking that through 30 million dollars <laughs> come on people wake up um, uh, analysts are particularly worried about the dispersal of the SA-7 
an early generation shoulder fired missile in the same family as the more widely known Stinger. Yeah. Okay. So maybe you don't think that the CIA would take uh, these weapons and give them to the opposition so that they can cause more, more problems and conflict. Maybe you don't. And you don't believe that, that they would um, take the $30 million so that they could pay operatives to actually fund that operation. It's okay. Um, but you have to believe that the government uh, are putting cameras in your car. E told Pat, uh, this is unbelievable. You have a caller, Howard. Hey, that's great. Who's calling? Hello, Howard. Yes, who's this? It's Jim. What's going on? Jim. How are you, Jim? Not bad, not bad. Jim, I was just reading. Not... What? Go ahead. What were you saying? Nothing. This is uh, Jim, uh, Jim from We Are Change, Connecticut. How are you, my friend? Not bad, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Listen, I was just talking about um, the government is, you know, did you know that uh, the government is, pl is planning on putting cameras in your car, Jim? Are you a conspiracy theorist? Oh, no, absolutely not. In fact, this is actually mainstream news, uh, which is usually not what we report here at uh, We Are Change. It's usually the news that the mainstream media ignores, but we'll look a little further into it. But it seems that Bob Sullivan from MSNBC uh, wrote an article that says, uh, imagine you couldn't drive on a major highway without agreeing to put a camera in your car, one that could film either occupants or the vehicle surroundings and transmit the images back to a central office for inspection. You don't have to read well, you your... Well, um, you know Progressive does that, right? Oh, yeah, it's, cri it's criminal. It's criminal. Progressive insurance? Yeah. I don't know if you ever saw one of the commercials where they say, like, I I'm not exactly sure how it's, it's said, but they're pretty much, you know, you, you pay your rate as you drive. Like, you know, if you're a safe driver, you get paid, you know, pay your different rate than, uh, you know, a reckless driver would. And how did that it is is when you call them up and you apply for that kind of insurance, you have to agree to a monitoring system in your vehicle that's going to judge everything, the speed, how fast you go, <laughs> um, you know, if you're, if you're doing abrupt braking, you know, moving quick out of, at a stoplight, and all these different variables are going to, you know, be counting into your insurance rate. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's, it's just it's horrible. It's horrible. I mean, there's just, they're everywhere. I just, it's just out of control. Now they're talking about the, anything. If you ever post any kind of form of a TSA, emblem or their logo that it's, it's going to be a criminal offense. I mean, really? That know, I didn't hear. When did you hear that? That's great. I post it all the time. And it's been posted. Yeah, yeah. I posted them all the time. The other day. <laughs> yeah, the other day, if you actually, they're trying to pass a law through the house that if you, uh, oh, God. If you display a TSA emblem in a, or, you know, a trademark and kind of a logo, that you're going to, it's going to be a criminal offense and you're going to get arrested. I, I, you know, I, I just can't. Go through all that beautiful jazz. Jim, I, I can't believe it. I mean, we live in this fascist dictatorship that's being, you know, like, where do they, I mean, how can you, I, I, and the people are like, oh, yeah, okay. Well, I, that's like saying we can't use a flag. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's our government. Isn't this our government? Well, let's, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is our government, okay? Right? They're telling us that we can't display a symbol of our government that is ours of the people, by the people, and for the people. Do I get this exactly right? Exactly what they're doing. They're doing it in schools right now, I think, where a kid who actually displayed a flag, you know, he drew a flag on a, on a, a piece of paper with, you know, coloring crayons, mm -hmm. and uh, it was an American flag. I and heard the that. the teacher said, you know, you can't do that. That's very offensive. Yeah, it's offensive, yeah. I know. Yeah, it's offensive, but, you know, meanwhile, and everybody else's flag is fly. Well, listen, there's this company called Capish Traffic. Um, AG, an Austrian company, <laughs> an Austrian company that just signed a, just signed a 10-year lease contract to provide in-car transponders such as the Easy Pass and 22 electronic highway toll collection systems around the U.S. recently filed a patent on technology to add multifunction mini cameras to the toll oh, gadgets. Man. To the toll gadgets. So today, transponders are about 22 million cars around U.S. Adding inward and out. Well, 
Yes, in one and out. They should just put it on us, and they don't have to worry about. They already, they do. Do. You know, it's, well, well, listen. Why don't they just? Yeah, why don't they just pass a law? Yeah, why don't you put a, a, a camera on your head? You know, you have to wear it, or they'll, or, or better yet, just they'll remove your eyes and they'll put these cameras in there. There you go. There's a screenplay to write. You know, there is a guy. Yeah, yeah, of course not. Don't take it, obviously. Uh, no, but no. Here's the thing about the select ID card. Um, right now, it's not mandatory. It's you know just. I know. Yeah. Within seven years, I was told that I wanted the DMV workers. Oh yeah. Within seven years, it's going to be mandatory. They're going to try to make it mandatory, but there's um, there's no way. I'm not, there's just no way. Yeah, she said they're already in there. But I mean, I'd have to go. You'd have to really research this. But come on, really? Do you really think they won't? I, mean, I know sure they'll try, but I, I know they'll try. But what, look, seven years is a long time. Like I said, I did a, I did a show on this, and uh, I mentioned it, and I was like, listen, come that time, you know, hopefully by then, we won't have to worry about it because it'll be like. But yeah, we have to make people aware that it's not going to be mandatory. You can't ma have, take a mandatory verified ID card if you don't listen. You know, that's just ridiculous. Uh, go get your passport. Go get everything you need so you have the right documents now. Make sure you don't lose them. And the hell with them. And, you know, so you can't go in a federal building? What they're going to probably do is make every employer has to employ somebody that has that select ID card. Yeah, it would make sense. It would, yeah, but listen, it, that, that's how fucking crazy it is, man. These people are insane. You, They won't give you, like, they, they won't do anything about illegal immigration, but they'll, they'll no. give everybody a select ID card... So, you know, it's just, it's just madness, you know, it's just madness. I can't, you know, you think about the logic there. Oh, let's give everybody so you can't work unless you get this card, you know, so everyone will get it, you know, it's crazy. And, and we're not criminals, we're not, we're not illegals. Why do we have to be treated like criminals? We've got to get Ron Paul president. If we get him president of the United States, maybe we could change a little bit of... Of the way we're going, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm not expecting him to make miracles, but I'm pretty sure he could be the uh, the starting of a, of a change in this government and how they rule over us. You know, they think the Constitution limitates limits the, the people. They don't realize it limits the government. And the idea of the limited. Constitution is to limit the government, right? Yes. Exactly, but they think it limits the people. Like, no, oh, you, you know, you can't do this. You can't videotape a cop when you're doing an arrest and beating a lot of people with nightsticks. How dare you! How dare you videotape somebody doing that? Yeah. You know, it, it's just out of control. And, and what, what uh, very upsets me, too, is that some of these um, very far left-wing occupying Wall Street, you know, they're kind of hide, trying to hijack it to make it into the socialist movement to get rid yeah. of capitalism. Um, and, you know, it's just, you know, capitalism isn't the problem, people. And the, the right. problem is, is our new media is only showing the left side. There's so many people that are there on the right side in the middle and libertarians and progressives and liberals and Tea Party members, union members, not union members, so everybody needs to wake up and go stand up for what they believe in. And this is this this Occupy thing is it has nothing to do with the size. It has to do with like they say, you know, they kinda use that ninety nine percent. It's like they're not they're even telling you that they're not even picking a side. We're just everybody else besides that one percent that rules over us. You know, and it's so I mean it's pretty good that a lot of people are getting active. You know, there's a lot of things going on in the next couple of weeks pertaining to that. There's a huge uh, event on the 24th in New York at the Fed. Um, there's actually a couple. I think it's um, next Tuesday at the what um, the police department in Southington, Connecticut. Really. They're actually yeah they're actually having a, at the John Birch Society no is kidding. holding an event. They're holding an event about Agenda 21, and they want to talk about the negative effects of Agenda 21 and, and inform the people before these, you know, Looney Tunes come in and try to take over our property with the UN. Wow, we're and, there, uh, man. We're there. I'll, I'll get a lot of footage too. I'll film the hell out of that. That's great. 24th. About that's excellent. I think it's, uh, no, the the 18th next Tuesday on the 18th at the Southington Police Department. 69 Lazy Lane, they're holding an event that pertains to Agenda 21. And this is being held by the Oath Keepers okay. and the local chapters of the John Birch Society. And they're doing this at about 7 o'clock at night, I think. So That's it's good. a perfect time for everything to attend. That's amazing. And All right, uh, plug that again. Plug that again, Jim.